Good morning, folks. We've got some key science items to hit today. We've got weather weirding underway in the West. We even got some space weather to peek at starting at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star were mostly quiet, mostly. No major equatorial coronal holes, no major active regions, but top right we'll see an eruption underway this morning. The corona ripples as the event takes place just behind the limb, out of view. The CME is erupting out of the corona this morning, doing so 90 degrees away from Earth so it won't affect our solar wind, which, by the way, has decided to go to sleep. Plasma speed dropping to near 300 kilometers per second, the quieter side of ambient quiet streams, and unsurprisingly, geomagnetic conditions are quiet as well. Folks, the cold air is coming down the Rocky Mountains with the jet stream dip. The lone silver lining is the clearing of the enduring wildfire smoke and easing of the flames causing them. Screaming winds. It's 55 degrees south of yesterday's high here in the springs, going 10 to 15 degrees lower today. And as you can see, it's not going to be fun for anyone caught in this one. Up next, we are going to a powerful star-forming galaxy in deep space. This is what they envision it looks like, except a bit more like this. In fact, they say that a furious star-forming epoch recently occurred, and they spotted it before significant enhancement of the interstellar medium of the galaxy, which helps block the starlight. And that combination makes it the brightest star-forming galaxy in the known universe. Up next, as Solar Cycle 25 began here in 2020, it's time to stop the forecasting and get a quick survey of the wide range of predictions made over the last few years. As you can see, they range from a super weak cycle, almost grand minimum level, to super maximum activity level. But that dotted line of the average indeed shows what would be the bell peak of the curve. Notice the pink, green, and yellow in that middle range dominating. The studies that use the best indicators of activity, and one of those is the same solar polar fields that we use to predict the seismic uptick of the last nine days. But its original purpose was to get a picture of the sun's magnetic power indicative of the upcoming sunspot cycle. And so far, all the solar cycle activities have matched the power of those magnetic fields at the sun's poles, the minimum before. So on the right side of the chart, you can see we're almost exactly at last cycle's power maximum right now, which makes us look ahead to the sunspot maximum coming in a few years and suggest that we should see about the same thing as we saw last cycle. Grand solar minimum indicative power would be about half of this, and that is expected in the coming cycles of the century. Up next, we're going to one of the great eruptions from behind the limb and field of view. 2012, July 23rd, first thing in the morning, a CME was seen leaving the corona on the right. It was gauged to have been ultra fast, nearly Carrington level storm, and today they tell us it could have been even bigger. In fact, there were no coronal holes or CMEs clearing the inner heliosphere before the event, which would have reduced Plasma Dragon made for a doubly more impactful punch, since a faster CME would have been following something else. It's a nod not only to the power of the sun, but how Earth's main concern must include consecutive impact scenarios and not just one big blast. Last but not least, folks, in a paper going to the Solar Physics Journal, they are discovering a violation of the zeroth law of thermodynamics, and we can thank the Parker Solar Probe for this one. This occurs when alphane waves propagate in one direction through plasma, but that is indeed the most common thing for astrophysical plasmas in this universe. So the seemingly small tweak needs to apply across the universe and across time. To say it has interesting implications is a bit of an understatement. Time to go back and rerun those supercomputer simulations of the universe, Big Bang, Dark Matter, go ahead and get in the lineup. It can help us understand the formation of our planet, the true nature of the interior, and the generation of the magnetic fields, not just at planets, but at stars too. And yes, it can definitely help broaden the perspective when mainstream plasma physics says, we don't care how many nova and even tiny nova we see in space, the sun won't do it. Yeah, the most common line from new science articles is in fact something like, the scientists were surprised to see, or these unexpected results call into question the long-standing thinking on something something dark side. This realm is as we feared, hostile. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.